Will I meet my next ex-husband here in San Francisco? It could be me. 24 hour, get over with Robbie around the world. I just arrived in San Francisco and now I'm gonna show you a cute boutique option of where to stay. For an eclectic, funky, chic hotel, check out Citizen M, located conveniently in Union Square, with a baller rooftop for photo shoots. There's these books that are in the room that I feel are very personal. Yes. We have How to Find Love, and for all of you who know, I always look for love whenever I travel somewhere. Yes. And we have Why You Will Marry <laughs> the Wrong Person. <laughs> I feel like this is a direct read on me. Oh, it's a direct read on most people. Oh, the library is open. Let's find out what lights up the folks in San Francisco. What gives you the most life and energy here in San Fran? I mean, I really love that San Francisco is at the forefront of a lot of progressive movements that we um, push for justice, racial justice, justice for the LGBTQ community, and that we do that through innovation and that we're not afraid to try something new. Vibrance and the you know, the, the diversity of thought, the diversity of kind of the people. Um, it's a pretty fun, energetic town without being like overwhelming. There's so many great communities here and people are so friendly and they're passionate about what they do. There's so many creative, um, innovative, exciting people just, you know, trying to make their mark on the world. It's always bizarre, somewhat entertaining. The San Francisco Castro District is the largest LGBTQ community in the world. We are 45 blocks and we have no straight bars in our neighborhood. It is a city that is an amalgamation of so many different cultures and places and things and everyone has a story and it's super energizing, it's super revitalizing and it's super galvanizing because you go away and you come back and it just feels like home here. The people of San Francisco is unique. The people that come to San Francisco looking for their je ne sais quoi or just being free to be whoever you want, whenever you want, however you want. It has that international feel without having the overtones that sometimes are intimidating about an international city. San Francisco is really easy going, so I think it's more approachable in most cities. I am who I am because of this, the freedom of this city. The ability to get out into open spaces away from the concrete. Seeing people coming from all over the world, um, coming in and seeing like their history, their life, their community represented. Um, that's not something we see in many places anywhere else in the world. I love the connection to nature here. Like as you can see, we're in a beautiful eucalyptus forest and this is in the middle of San Francisco. There's Golden Gate Park, which is bigger than Central Park. I have gotten to arguments with New Yorkers about that, but it is. It's so easy to merge that city nature life here, which I love. I'm getting yelled at all <laughs> over social media because I'm calling the city San Fran. Yeah. Why is that a crime? I don't know, it just hurts your ears. Same with Frisco. It just doesn't sound right. <laughs> I think San Fran sounds pleasant. I don't know, it's more like if you're gonna say, you can say SF, you can say the city or San Francisco, but San Fran just sounds, I don't know, it's like you're trying too hard almost. Oh, okay San Francisco. Now it's time to see this city. I'm on a hunt right now to find the best Instagrammable spots here in San Francisco. Let's go. Give me Gibbler! After Fra 
Frolicking the Fields, let's learn about the queer history and cultural districts in the city. I'm standing right now in front of Compton's Cafeteria, a historical landmark because in 1966, preceding Stonewall, a group of trans women and gay men fought back against police in the first full-out riot, demanding equality for the queer community. Here in San Francisco, we have what we call cultural districts, and they are protected areas based on a community of interest. We protect those areas. Um, we protect them against gentrification. We provide them with some resources to do cultural programming and really keep those places alive and vibrant, and hopefully also reverse some of the you know past disparities that those communities have faced. I actually got to work on that legislation back in the day to create the trans district, which is really centered around um, the Compton's Cafeteria riot. It, it took to the streets and, and lasted several days, and it was all based on a drag queen who got um, who threw her coffee in a cop's face at a diner when she was being harassed. So we based the district all around that spot. That's the center of it at the corner of Trick and Taylor. It's located in the Tenderloin, which historically has also been a safe place for gender nonconforming and queer people since the very beginning of the foundations of the city. I would argue that the Tenderloin has probably the highest concentration of trans people anywhere in the country. The goal was really to stem the tide of displacement that we saw from our yeah. community. And we needed to guarantee that not only were we continuing to house people, provide them with opportunities, but we were also also honoring the history of um, the Tenderloin and the contributions of the trans community to the city of San Francisco. Now we're switching gears and chatting with Bob Goldfarb, the executive director of the Leather District. Well, we are an organization responsible for a particular geography to prevent displacement of our organizations, groups, and uh, venues, such as bars, uh, sex clubs and those sorts of venues. In 1980, there were 55 uh, leather and LGBTQ uh, venues in South of Market, and we're now down to 14. And it's our job to make sure that those organizations and venues stay here and bring new ones in. The leather culture, it, it is such a center of leather activity uh, that I find it very invigorating. Will I find a leather daddy? Any kind you want. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Easy, Robbie. Let's get some food in your system first. Start off with some locally sourced, incredible farm-to-table food at Farm Table in Knob Hill. For forward-thinking California comfort food, hit up Starbelly, which is in the Castro. Gracias Madre is all vegan, Mexican, have been located in the Mission District. Brenda's French Soul, which is located in the Tenderloin, is queer owned and has lavish soul food. Get your gay pizza on at Marcello's in the Castro. And now let's turn up the queer nightlife. The gayberhood in San Francisco is heavily focused in the Castro, but it's also sprinkled throughout Soma. Twin Peaks is the first gay bar in the country to have open windows and is a must-see staple. Moby Dick is a no-attitude local neighborhood bar. Lookout is the jam, especially on weekends with a non-pretentious crowd. Oasis is a fantastic venue for avant-garde drag. Powerhouse is a great spot for the otters, bears, cubs, wolves, and their admirers. Looking for your leather daddy? You must hit up the Eagle SF, especially on Sunday fun day. End your night being a gamer at the only queer arcade bar in the city where I really show my athletic moves. San Francisco, which I've learned to not call San Fran, has been absolutely stunning. This is a city filled with insane views, more dogs than children, filled with luscious neighborhoods. Don't just come and explore the Castro, explore the mission, go to Soma, support the Tenderloin. The Transgender District and the Leather District originated here providing services, preserving safe spaces and keeping businesses alive and supporting queer folks. I 100% recommend that you go on the Love Bus Tour where you're gonna learn all about this magical city in just two hours. As for what to pack, bring a jacket, maybe a leather jacket. Layer, layer, layer as the city's temperature changes from neighborhood to neighborhood. I have met so many fabulous people and I might have fallen in love. Thank you SF Travel and Alaska Airlines for bringing me to this incredible city filled with love, innovators, hope, and gorgeous humans. 
If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment below, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you on my next adventure. 24 hour, yeah.